Hi folks, so I'm on the bench here with a, yet another, another piece up along to my friend Steve. This is a Pioneer SX680, the little 30 watt per channel amp. It's got um, STK outputs, some people don't care for those. Um, as long as they work, everything's good. But this is uh, exhibiting some really strange phenomena. So I'm gonna set it up on the test equipment, we'll do the dim bulb, turn on test equipment, I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so I've got this connected to the dim bulb tester, and it's important when you use this that you use an appropriately sized bulb. Um, the whole purpose of the dim bulb tester is to starve the unit of any current should a short circuit occur. If there's a short in the unit, the bulb glows brightly, the filament starves the unit for current, which might, may cause further damage. So I've got this plugged in now, we flip it on, and that's perfectly normal behavior. Now, this Okay, it's starting to glow a little more brightly, but it's still not bad. Um, I've got it hooked to my dummy loads, and we're going to take a look at it. I've looked at this already, and wow, it's something to see. So we got to take it off the dim bulb. But um, I'm going to turn the test equipment on, and I'll show you what I saw. Okay, so I got this connected to the test equipment here. We're going to turn on, we're going to put some signal through here and see what we get. Wow. That is like beyond ugly. And it's... It says it's putting out two watts on the right channel. But boy, look at the distortion products. 60%, 61. Okay, we're gonna have to take a look at this and see what's going on. Okay, so I've got the meters. Uh, I have the speaker outputs connected to the meters, left channel, right channel. And when I turn the uh, receiver on, we get about five, six volts of offset. Both channels are pretty similar, although the right channel looks worse. And if you look at the scope, you can see the right channel's got some uh, got some noise issues. We're gonna have to take a look at that. Meantime, we have a lot of positive offset, and that gives us an idea where to look at. Both channels are causing problems, therefore, we need to take a look in the power supply that feeds it. Specifically, what we're gonna look for is a loss of the negative supply, which would cause the pot, the output to lean positive. Okay, so this is a portion of the schematic showing the output stage, and I cop copied and pasted it into paint, and I just put in some of the expected DC voltages here. Um, the outputs are fed by positive 30 here, and negative 30 here. But we also have a negative 33.3 volts that comes down in the here. And I believe it also comes down into here. So it feeds these transistors one in each channel and we should have negative 32.5 volts. We should have our negative 33.3 here. So we're gonna look at the power supply schematic and see what the story is with that. Okay, so this is a small uh, section of the schematic showing the power supply. And we have our positive 30 and negative 30 volts. Now, these are not exact numbers. In fact, you can see they say, uh, they say positive 34.5 here and negative 34.5 here. They're not regulated. A few volts is not gonna change anything or hurt anything. And we get our negative 33.3 at the other side of R410, this 100 ohm resistor. So I wanna take a look at this. We wanna see what our voltage looks like on both sides of that to see why we're not getting positive voltage at the output. 
Okay, so looking down in here, this is our 410. This is our 100 ohm resistor. And I want to turn the, amp uh, turn the receiver on and check the voltage at both sides of this with respect to ground to see if we're getting our voltages. So let me get the meter set up and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I've got the meter set up. It looks like it's somewhat in focus at least. And I'm going to turn this on and we're going to probe both sides of that resistor and see what we get. Okay, so I've turned it on. And on one side of that, we get our negative 33.4. And on the other side, we get 3.94 volts. So we need to see if something is either pulling it down or if our resistor is opened up. Now, when we look at the schematic, we see that there is a symbol right by the resistor here. So it may be a flame proof and they have been known to go up in value, a uh, flame proof fusible resistor. So I'm gonna take a look at that and then I'm gonna see if there's a problem with the resistor or if something is pulling too much current through it. Okay, so it's important that you make sure you have no DC voltage there's a little bit of residual left. Um, we want this to bleed down because any kind of DC voltage will, will interfere with our resistance check. So it's dropping down. It's on 125 millivolts now. So I'm gonna see if we can get any kind of reading here and we'll reverse the leads to uh, mitigate any residual voltage that we might be getting. But I have a feeling that this resistor may have opened up so when we measure it this way, and you can measure these in circuit. Okay, that's showing like mega ohms, and we'll reverse it. See if DC is causing us issues. Yeah, I think it's probably a few mega ohm. Um, these fusible resistors have been known to go bad over time for, uh, I don't know if it's age, they take so many surges and then they give up the ghost. But anyway, I'm going to pull that out and we'll check it. But I believe this is at least part of our problem. Okay, so I got the resistor out and there are no markings at all on this board. But the resistor was right down in here. And I was able to find it by looking at the layout diagram that comes in the manual and seeing that R410 was right next to a two watt resistor and very close to our filter cap. So that's how I was able to locate this. So I've got it out now. We're gonna take a look and see just how that tests. I have a feeling it's gonna test pretty badly. Let's see what we get. Okay. No glare on the meter. Nothing up a sleeve. All right, so when we connect this, we get 3.4K. So that's a little over 100 ohms. So we're going to replace that and see what we get. We may still have a problem, but this is not unusual to have these drift up like this. Okay, so I have a replacement here. This is also a flame proof. You, you can tell they have that kind of matte grayish body. And we're gonna put this in and see what we get. Okay, so I soldered that resistor in there and I left the leads on because uh, it's a convenient place to measure the voltage drop across it. I wanna make sure there's not too much current going through that resistor. So I have it on the dim bulb tester. We're gonna turn it on to see what kind of voltage drop we get. Okay, it's about a volt climbing a little bit but if we look at our meters up here they're looking a whole lot better yeah we are only got milliamps of output as opposed to volts of output and this is stabilized it's about 1.09 volts so I did the math on it it's just probably around 11 millivolts so it should be fine so let's turn on that noisy test equipment and see what we get. 
button. Okay, so I have the speakers plugged back in the dummy loads and I've got the test equipment on. So I'm gonna turn it on, we're gonna put some signal in and see if it looks any better. Okay. And it looks a whole lot better. So let's see what we can get this thing to do. Okay. And it stabilizes to pretty good. I think we had a little clipping on the left channel there, and there's a little bit of an imbalance. Probably need to have the switches clean. I don't know how long this thing has been sitting, but uh, yeah. We have a fair amount of distortion on the channel, on the left channel. I'm gonna to wanna to take a look at that, but she's looking good, looking a whole lot better anyway. So I'm gonna turn this off and I wanna talk a little bit about something you'll hear me say a lot, and that is let the symptom be your guide. Now, we had similar symptoms in both channels and that points to the power supply. And in most cases, that's going to be where you look. Um, however, I said in most cases because there are very few hard and fast rules. I had a sound craftsman power amplifier on my bench and it had, I'll show you the waveform here, it had different waveforms on both channels but they were as terrible as this. So I thought, well, let's look at the power supply. But after uh, a minute of poking around the power supply, it appeared that it was not the problem. And the problem actually was in each channel. It's rather rare, but it does happen. And that's why it's so important not to get fixated on your diagnosis, because it could be something else. And if you fixate on something, and if I had fixated on that, I never would have fixed it. And this was several years ago, it would still be unfixed, but I had to back up and go, okay, the power supplies are good, let's look at each channel. And I found the same open resistor in each channel. Now this one was more of your classic trouble. We had an open resistor. These fusibles do go south. You saw this one, went bad, was reading about 3.4K once we got it out of circuit. And once we replaced it, everything looked good. It didn't appear that there was too much current going through it. It's just over time, these uh, fusible flame proofs just tend to fail. Very common in, uh, in Sansui's if you work on those. So anyway, I think I'm gonna stop this video here. I'll see what the distortion is. And if it's something interesting, I'll post another video. But other than that, I think we're gonna call this one good. And as always, I thank everyone for watching. And I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot.